Welcome back everyone. Today, I'm going to show you how to take a regular color image like this and turn it into a dramatic black and white photo using only the developed persona in Affinity Photo 2. I started with this lovely image of the Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris that I downloaded for free on pixabay.com. I'll leave the link in the description if you want to follow along. Anyway, I'll start by clicking on the light bulb shaped develop persona icon in the top left toolbar. You'll see the studio change right away. You can see several tabs below the histogram on the right. I'll be using the overlays, basic and tones tabs here today. If you click on the tones tab, you'll see three options. I'll select the black and white box, and then I wanna darken the sky which was full of blue. So I'll move the cyan and blue sliders all the way to the left. You can play with the other sliders if you want, but I know that these two work the best for this image. This already looks pretty cool, but I'm going to do some more here. First, I'll go to the basic tab and I'll move my exposure slider down quite a bit. Then I'll go to the overlays tab and click on the add gradient overlay button all the way to the bottom right of the studio. Then. I'll make sure the gradient type is set to elliptical and I'll use my cursor to drag a gradient overlay onto my canvas. You can use the little handlebars and the feather slider to manipulate the size and shape of the gradient. Okay, next I'll go back to the basics tab and move the exposure slider up to the right a bit. Notice how this change now only affects the area where my gradient is overlaid. I can change any of these other sliders as well. I'll move the contrast up as well to show you. You can add as many of these overlays as you want and each will have its own settings that you choose. I'll go back to the overlay tab and add another elliptical gradient. I'll use the little handlebars to make this one a little wider than the first. Then I'll switch back to the basic tab and change the exposure for this area. Again, notice how this new overlay is independent from the other changes I made earlier. I'll do one more elliptical overlay at the bottom, so I'll go back to the tones tab, select the gradient overlay and drag another one out over the door. Then back to the basics tab to up the exposure for this area. Well, I guess I lied a little. I want to do one more on the tower to the right, but I'll speed this one a bit so as not to bore you. Stay with me here as I want to show you one other thing you can do. All right, this is looking really good for a quick demonstration. The last thing I'm gonna do is add a little backlighting to the right-hand side. I'll go back to the tones and select the gradient overlay again, but this time I'll change it from elliptical to linear. Then, I'll drag my cursor from the top right down to near the middle. I'll go back to the Basics tab and raise the exposure once again. But this time, I'll also move some of these other sliders like the black point, brightness and contrast just for fun. Notice how that makes the shadows from the smaller tower really pop out. All right. That's about it for today. If you learned something and want to see more of this kind of content, please click those like and subscribe buttons. And if you're feeling generous, this channel runs on caffeine. There's a link to buy me a cup of coffee in the descriptions. Not necessary, but certainly appreciated. Have a great day, everyone.